Now, from the southwest to the southeast and across Nigeria, the ruling APC party is caught in the grip of what appears to be a deepening crisis, with various factions battling to take control of the party that put President Buhari in the top job. There are political firefights at almost every level of the party, and as one fight looks like it's reaching its end, another erupts from a different direction. Currently, there are chaotic ward congresses, boycotts, parallel congresses, challenges to various leaderships, lots of aggrieved party members, and lingering court cases. And there is concern amongst many of the party faithful that the APC is lurching towards a very grave situation that might leave it empty of competitive potential as both governorship elections across several states and a presidential ballot in 2023 draw ever nearer. Amid the crisis, there are growing cries of injustice and anti-democratic actions by governors and caretaker committees. As the factional battles deepen, so does anxiety about the future direction of Nigeria's ruling party. Well, Senator Adamu Aliero is a leading member of the APC party. He's a former two-term governor of Kebi State in the Northwest and is currently chairman of the Senate Committee on Works. And, of course, he was a former uh, minister of the Federal Capital Territory. And he joins me now in the studio. That's an incredible pedigree you've got there. Thank you very much, Charles. I want to talk about that a little bit later. Um, okay. the things that you've done and why you keep doing them. But let's begin with the crisis in the APC party. Just before we came on air, you sort of laughed when I said there's a crisis in the APC. But it does appear that way to those of us who are not in, in the party. Um, lots of doomsday sort of showdowns, factional battles, plots in Oshun State and across the Southwest, the ward congresses in Tatters, crisis in the APC, in Enugu, Anambra, etc. Also, of course, on the national level, a, a leadership crisis. What is going on in the APC? And don't say it's a normal thing in a party because it isn't. Well, Crisis is normal in a political party like APC. It's a very big party. And remember how it was formed. Mm -hmm. It was among, uh, um, um, an amalgam of many political parties. The PDP, the ANC, the APGA, the CPC, they all came, uh, team up together to fight PDP. Mm. And that's how uh, APC emerged. So there is and nothing up, up holding now, them up to together. Now we then. still have a problem of uh, harmonizing right. the political party. Well, it's a long time, yeah. isn't it? It's a long time, but uh, uh, the fact that we are now doing congresses at various levels. Disputed you know, congresses. It, it, well, I wouldn't say disputed congresses. Uh, normally, when you have congresses, you may have disagreement here and there. But I can assure you that the party had the capacity to overcome this crisis you, you talked about. Uh, we have inbuilt mechanism whereby we will resolve all our crises. We will not allow it to affect the chances of uh, uh, us, you know, losing, you know, 2023 elections. Already we have taken steps to ensure that uh, uh, these crises are resolved amicably. Uh, there is an appeal committee being set up by the uh, caretaker committee uh, to go to all the states where we have uh, uh, factional congresses so that they can sit down with the various factions and agree on a particular formula on how to settle you know, uh, the disputes they have. Uh, APC is capable of reconciling itself. Uh, the press is uh, showing that uh, the crisis is beyond, you know, imagination. But we in the APC know that. Uh, Do you think we're exaggerating? Uh, uh, yeah, it is greatly exaggerated, and uh, I can assure you that uh, we will overcome it very soon. Well, we're off on the at the national level. Yes. Yes, the Supreme Court judgment. 
um, uh, arising from the governorship election of uh, Ondo State mm. um, has thrown uh, a light on the possibility of APC having problem with the uh, leadership. But uh, we have been advised by our legal expert to continue with the Congresses, but it will be resolved uh, when we reach there. But how concerned are you that all this is deep? After all, it's human beings who form a political party. Yeah. And when you've got this level of fighting and animosity within a party, it puts that party in a very grave situation, doesn't it? I mean, the, the whole point of a party is people who think in a like manner, who ha share the same ideology and want to use that ideology to move a country forward. But the way things are going, I mean, this could well torpedo your chances of doing I don't think so. Doing I told you that uh, uh, the crisis the APC is facing uh, is smaller in dimension compared to what the PDP is facing. Uh, well, yeah, but but the, it, the PDP's crisis mm -hmm. was a progressive one, and and it progressed to no, the no, point no, where, where they lost I, the elections, I, 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 I and, and it just got no, worse. No, 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 no. Ours is more progressive than that of the PDP. I mean, their crisis. I mean, are you, you're saying your crisis is more progressive yeah, than of that course, of the PDP? Of, of course, in the, in the sense that... Uh, uh, we have the capacity to reconcile ourselves. Right. While PDP is struggling to see what they can do to come together. Uh, one faction trying to push away the other. Uh, the other faction is, to, is trying to take control and hold on to you know, the political power. Well, the, the uh, problem, They don't even know what to do. Yeah, but the but problem, at least in our own case, right. we have focus, we have direction. Well, that's we what know you, where that, we're heading to. That's what you huh? say. We already set up a committee right. to reconcile all the places where we have uh, right. but, but that, that's a ceremony. What, that, that's what and, you and, say. And, 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 and tension within the, sure. uh, uh, within the states. That's what you say. And, 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 like and we, we take that on board. Okay. But okay. The, the problem, of course, I mean, the, the problem is for the Nigerian people mm -hmm. who are watching all this. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any difference whether it's APC or PDP. The two parties, Nigeria's biggest parties, Nigeria's big hope for yeah. the future are yeah. mired in crisis. And yeah. the problem, of course, is that in your own case, whilst you are all fighting each other in the APC, the mm -hmm. party is the ruling political group in Nigeria. And with this country in the throes of insecurity, mired in an economic downturn, any political instability in the APC just adds to the country's woes, doesn't it? Yeah, I agree with you that uh, if we have political instability, it is bound to affect, you know, the uh, country's security situation. And that is why we are very concerned and uh, we are all out to ensure that uh, we resolve this crisis, you know, as soon as possible. Uh, regarding the security situation, the government is doing all it can to ensure that uh, the country is secured. Recently, the National Assembly um, approved over 860 billion naira and additional funds for the security forces of this country. This, the military, the police, the civil defense, uh, just to ensure that uh, enough money is being given to the security forces to fight the insurgency, the banditry, uh, kidnapping, and what have you. And uh, uh, this money has already been released to various units of the security forces and they are making good use of it and that's why the security situation is a little bit better now than mm. it was well I, uh, I have to agree with you that the, there's been some marginal improvement no um, there is a well, it's tremendous a, it's, improvement it's a marginal improvement i don't think it, i don't think it is marginal because the, the, uh, the, for the, more than two weeks now we, we have not had Major well, there, there's just been a kidnapping. I yeah, mean, in, and, and in they've the asked for the first, yes, uh, almost but for more than two weeks, million we haven't had anything since the kidnapping of uh, well, uh, maybe the kidnappers were on holiday. Uh, it, it's no, not no, they cannot necessarily be due to the fact that you know the, the security the, forces are giving them tough time, they are narrowing on their enclave.
battle in all over the, in the state where we have uh, bandits. They are being surrounded and they, they are working seriously. They are trying to muzzle them and they are, some, some are even surrendered. Right. You must have about 1,500 uh, insurgents in North East surrendering their arms, you know, um, and embracing peace. Well, we, we, we'll have to see what impact the government that, that has on, on the fight. By, right. by, 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 the, by, by, by these people. Uh, over 1,500 of them have laid their arms. They are now trying to embrace peace. The problem is how to settle them, how to reorient them, and how to make them... Uh, be an integral part of the society. But but should that be the Even the case? in North West, we have many bandits who are now uh, uh, surrendering their arms. So it shows that uh, the security forces are really working. But should they be reintegrated into society or prosecuted for the crimes they've committed against society? Well, it depends on what the government policy is. I personally would not advise that we should uh, forgive them. They should be prosecuted. Once it is established that uh, they have killed people, mm. the law must, must take its due course. But on the other hand, if they surrender unconditionally and embrace peace, maybe perhaps government may uh, decide to forgive them based on the fact that we now want peace all over the country. After all, we had a situation in Niger Delta where people killed so many foreigners, so many Nigerians, and uh, when they embrace amnesty, when they embrace peace, we forgive them. But equally, in the Northeast and the Northwest, if they voluntarily surrender their arms and embrace peace, and uh, it is being established that they really uh, are serious, uh, uh, we can right. get them reintegrated okay. to society and uh, make them okay. useful members of Please the society. Please stay with us, sir. Uh Senator, would like no. to talk with you some more. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with Senator Adamu Alero, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Works and former Governor of Kenny State. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Onyegolo. Now, my guest today is the former governor of Kebi State and former minister of the federal capital territory of Abuja, Senator Adamu Alero. Senator Alero is currently a member of the Upper House of Nigeria's National Assembly and chairman of the Senate Committee on Works. He's also the proprietor of the third largest rice mill in Nigeria, the Labana rice mill in his home state of Kebi. In addition to all that, he's also, by his own admission, a big fan of the former military president of Nigeria, General Ibrahim Babangida, or IBB, who turned 80 on Tuesday. And not surprisingly, Senator Alira was one of the many dignitaries who made the trip to IBB's hilltop mansion in Mina, Niger State, to celebrate with the former military ruler. Sadly, the media were kept well away from the event. And Senator Adamu Alero, former governor of Kebi State and current chairman of the Senate Committee for Works, is still with me in the studio. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, as I said, you were one of the many dignitaries who turned up in MENA to mark IBB's 80th uh, birthday on Tuesday. The list of guests included former heads of state, ministers, former ministers, governors, former governors such as yourself, captains of industry members of the National Assembly. I mean, it almost seemed like a massive political gathering. I mean, what message emerged from that event for Nigerians? Well, the message that emerged from that uh, large gathering is that uh, IBB is a personality Nigerian loved a lot. Fascinating Because of what he did it? for this country. Uh, he, he was a military head of state. He participated in the civil war to keep Nigeria one. He sustained an injury which is still with him. And above all, he participated actively in uh, rebuilding this country. Mm. And um, uh, one must give him credit 
for all what he has done, particularly his contribution in the development of the Federal Capital Territory. He is the head of state that moved the Federal Capital Territory from Lagos to Abuja permanently. Shagari did it, but he is responsible for massive movement mm. of all the ministries from Lagos to Abuja. And he did more than 50% of the infrastructural development in Abuja. That is true. Uh, yeah. And not only that, he constructed the expressway from Abuja to Kaduna to Zaria to Kanu, the first expressway ever constructed in the northern part of the country. And not only that, he also uh, linked all the geopolitical zones with the pipelines and uh, uh, depots that he constructed without borrowing a single penny. Mm. But it's equally ironic, isn't it, uh, Senator Aliero, that IBB was the one who opened up the space for new breed politicians in Nigeria by yeah. banning the old guard from standing for office when he was president. Mm. And yet for the last two decades or so, all levels of power in Nigeria have been dominated by familiar faces such as yourself, recycling yourselves through various political offices from minister to governor for two terms, then to the Senate. So in a sense, no term limits for you. I mean, because you <laughs> simply change your <laughs> the, toga. There's term limit. You, 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 I was governor well, for eight years. Well, let, let me just uh, make the, the point. Limit. You change your toga and then you walk into another office. Don't you find that to be a mockery of democracy, a sort of round tripping, as one newspaper put it, at the expense of Nigerians? I mean, what, doesn't that contradict what I've been I, I think there to is a great deal of misunderstanding of what politics politics is all about uh, if we look mean at the Nigerian 1999 politics. constitution right uh, you can contest for the office of the governor for two terms of four years each and that's all so there is time limit for that well yes equally the presidency is the same thing well obviously but for the senate you can go on and on without any limit whatsoever there's no limit for uh, a member of the house of representatives or a member of the House of Assembly, or a senator. Yeah, but what, uh, as what long as he's uh, being elected by his people, right. he can keep on coming back to the Senate, or the House of Representatives, or the House of Assembly. Yeah, but that's not the uh, point. What is, most, what is important is that right. a politician who is always uh, at, uh, 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 at, at home with his people, who is always together with his people, who is always keeping his people, you know, well informed of what's happening at the center and relevant at the state level. But don't, don't you, you keep on coming back? Yeah, but, to but the, don't you think don't you think the there's a assembly. problem with being? But uh, with, there is no problem whatsoever. Being, I don't see that any problem. Well, well, let me tell you what the problem is. Mm -hmm. it, it's not. It's surely not your experience as as an experienced politician, which yeah. you, you clearly are, because if that were the case, with so many recycled politicians in Nigeria this country would be in a much better position than it is right now, wouldn't it? I yeah. mean, you guys have kept, you keep coming back, yes. and yet Nigeria keeps getting worse. No, I don't think so. So what, what does that tell us about no, what no, you're bringing to the table? No, 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 I don't think so. The older you are, the more experienced you are. Yes, but are you the applying... better for the country. Well, you get me? I mean, there is rising Even poverty in Nigeria. Of, uh, senior senators cannot be compared with the contribution of somebody who has just joined the Senate. Yeah, but, but there, there's, if you know the system very well, you know how to improve it. But there's rising and, uh, poverty in Nigeria, so the system is not improving. In Nigeria, I agree with you. There, there is a collapsing economy in Nigeria, so the system is not improving. Broken down services in Nigeria, so the system is not improving, is it? I don't think so. Um, uh, you have to acknowledge the fact that uh, we are doing a lot to improve on the infrastructure. Okay, let, let, uh, let's... Uh, let me give an example. Yeah, for, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, you talk about railway, for example. Mm -hmm. For how many years have Nigerian railway collapsed without any 
you know, any, any effort being made by a successive government to revive it. It is only this government uh, that made a bold and courageous effort to revamp uh, all the state, the Nigerian Okay, language. let me bring now, in something uh, that is... I will give you an example. Yeah, we, it's we, just we that we've got two minutes left. Ibadan, Ibadan, Jeba, right. Jeba, Kanu. Right. Now, the East-West is almost completed. Uh, we are taking the uh, Potakot, mm. Enugu, out to Makodi and then Meduguri. Right. Yes. Well, we've got, we've within, got the, within the next two, three years, uh, all these uh, rail lines will be operational. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to just come, come years, in there. They have been We're going to run out of time yeah. okay. if, if I don't come in. And I know you wanted to talk about, because you're a farmer yeah. and a pretty successful one at that, and, yeah. and you're quite concerned about food security in Nigeria. Yeah. So I want to give you the last minute and a half to talk about that. Yeah. Food security is very important for mm. a developing country like Nigeria. More so because our population is growing at a very, very high rate at an exponential rate, I could say. Uh, it is estimated that uh, in the next 15 years, we will be the third largest country mm. in the world. Means, meaning only after China and in India, and the next country will be Nigeria in terms of population. And we can't keep on importing food. We have to do all we can to Absolutely. ensure that we can feed ourselves. And that's why we have to embrace agriculture. Not but only are you impressed with the policies? of livelihood, right. but also it's a commercial venture. But is Nigeria embracing that? Uh, now we have started doing that. This government has shown seriousness um, uh, with the levels of intervention, particularly mm. with what the CBN is doing. The Ankara Borough scheme, where farmers are getting money at a single digit. But commercial banks are not, you know, helping. Uh, if you borrow money at the commercial bank, you still pay double digit. Mm. It is not done anywhere in the world. There is no way you can develop agriculture with uh, an interest rate of over 20%. Right. Okay, well and that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. And, and I'm really sorry to Government has to come in and, and give support. Take the interest rate to that's a single good point. digit. If we do that, there will be tremendous development okay. in agriculture. Senator Adamu Alira, I want to thank you very much indeed. We really appreciate your coming in.